All right, cutting this large seed of bolting birch uh, plywood, I've taken some off of it. I don't remember what it was for, but I ripped off a piece of eight inches wide. That's okay. I need four 10 inch pieces. Not actually, I don't need uh, a couple of them are going to be smaller than that, but uh, I'm going to start with four 10 inch, five, sorry, five 10 inch pieces. Uh, four feet long. So this measure is five feet. I could I could rip off a foot here. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use that to square things up. So I'm going to go uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this into uh, two, two manageable pieces 31 and 21. And then I can uh, more easily rip my 10 inch pieces off. Now, now that I've got that thing set up, I'm going to run this edge, which is pretty much the uh, mirror or a parallel rip of the factory edge, which is on the bottom. I'm going to take off this little skim cut, that'll be a sixteenth or so. Watch how my boards track through that and how they cut. Flip them, another sixteenth, and then I'll probably flip them back and take my final width of 10 inches. That's good. And when you stand them up on end like this, you can also check to make sure that you're you're at 90 degrees. If there was any uh, tilt in that blade, it'd show up now. But it, these are all just just great. So now I can take my get my sled out, square these off, get my longest cuts, then get my uh, uh, I'm, I need 248s for the sides, and then. Um, 235 and well 35 and a halfs for the for the shelf and the uh, top and bottom. All right, I cut my uh, pieces that are going to face uh, edge my plywood five eighths of an inch thick. So I've got the two long ones and then three shorter ones here, and I joined in one edge, ripped it, and then. I uh, just kept doing that. So this 5 8 gives me room to play with. They're, they're just barely wider than the uh, plywood itself. But that I want that 5 8 so that when I uh, cut it to final width, I do it with the actual piece. I don't want to cut it at a half inch, glue it on there, and hope that it stays perfectly parallel. Uh, you never know what can happen. So this way, I know when I rip that edge and then maybe hit it with a block plane or run it over the joint or whatever, I'm going to have a nice straight parallel edge. After dominoing my hardwood strips, uh, edging strips to my plywood, uh, this, this jig I made, this thing has really worked out nice. I like that a lot. But let me show you what's going on here. And um, I probably should have made a better choice before I did this, but here I am. Uh, so my strips are 5 8 by the thickness of the ply after uh, edging them on the uh, table saw and then doing a little hand plane work. And I've used the, I used the small dominoes which are 4 millimeter by 20 millimeters. And when you use that small one you're not, you cannot adjust your depth of cut um, I shouldn't say that. You could, but then you'd have to trim your domino. So ideally what I would do in this situation would be like 15 millimeter cut this way, 25 millimeter cut into the ply. 
but the bit doesn't allow you to do that so I was stuck after I had made my initial cuts I, I realized I couldn't do anything different so here's here's a 20 millimeter cut and when you put the domino in here you're now you're you're a little deeper than what I would like to be I've got a quarter of an inch to play with here but I I would ideally want that to be probably about like that you know another sixteenth or so on to that so just kind of a little heads up for you there when you're using these small dominoes be aware that you cannot you you can't go smaller unless you're prepared to trim your trim the height of your domino so I've got some sanding to do here uh, I'll get that done and then we can move ahead and start putting this thing together I'm going to use my table saw blade to get this as close as I can and then I should be able to sand it out the rest of the way but we'll see how this works uh, I could do it with a flush trim rubber bit, but this shelf is so tall. Um, I just I want to try it this way and see what happens. So this feather board will keep it tight uh, to the bottom, but if I let go, it'll, it'll want to kick it in a little bit. So my job here is to keep it tight up on top and just keep pushing it through. <laughs> very close and actually it's within a couple thousandths of an inch of being flush except at the very beginning and the very end so I want to make sure that I let I'm going to make sure that that bottom stays in tight this time and same thing on the end when I push it through to finish tooth blade and that's a really nice finish actually it won't take hardly any sanding at all to get that flushed up really nice 